Hello, my name is JJ Sanchez. I am the grant negotiator for regions 12 and 15. Today I'll be taking you through actions that you can take prior to completing the application, as well as required schedules that will need to be completed before you're able to access the 2021-2022 Special Education Consolidated Grant Federal. Once I have completed my portion of the training, my colleagues Elizabeth Sanchez and Tammy Michaels will take you through the process of completing the 2021-2022 Special Education Consolidated Grant Application Federal. This presentation is being presented as a recording. However, you can still enter questions using the Q&A feature. Technical issues will be addressed through chat. We'll monitor the questions to provide answers at the end of the presentation, and in some cases, if it is a simple or short answer, we will respond to you. Closed captioning in the form of a live transcript and subtitles that are automatically generated by the Zoom webinar platform will be available at today's training. To access the closed captioning features, locate the closed captioning live transcript icon on the Zoom menu bar and click on it. The menu will provide you the options to show subtitles, view the full transcript as a training takes place, and additional subtitle settings. Before we get started, please note that the information being presented is general information based on the agency's current understanding of the subject matter. It is subject to change. It does not constitute legal advice, and you are advised to seek your own legal counsel before acting on any information or guidance being presented. The agenda for today's training will touch on the following topics. Preparations you should take before starting on your application, accessing e-grants, TO login and e-grants roles, completing the SC5003 formula advanced consolidated schedule, completing the GS2200 application designation and certification, ADC, then we will complete the application schedules as well as review updates to the 2021-2022 Special Education Consolidated Grant Application Federal, and it also identifies some grant resources that may assist you in completing these tasks. Here are some schedules that need to be completed prior to completing the application. The application schedules will need to be completed in the order they are presented here. SE 5003 first, followed by the ADC, once those are completed, you will have access to the grant application. Once planning amounts are calculated and become available, they will be posted on TA's entitlements page. There is a document titled Important Dates for 2021-2022 on TA Grants Administration's Grant Resources page under the training section. The document includes the same information for ESSA, SPED State, Perkins 5 for LEAs, and Perkins 5 Institutions. Next, we'll be looking at some steps you usually want to take prior to the application opening or as early as possible. Here are some preparations to take before the application is released. Update information in ASTED. LEA and campus information in ASTED should ideally be updated by early April. Verify staff has TO and eGrants access ideally as early as possible, April to May. So if you have not done so, we suggest doing it now. Coordinate with other staff members, set up time and communicate with those who have information that will help you complete the application. Obtain a copy of the most recently approved 2021 SPED application federal. Review the application and any negotiation items. Once the application has been reviewed, use it to help complete the 21-22 application. Coordinate and update eGrant contacts for SPED, ESSA, and Perkins. Please be sure to use Chrome as your internet browser. On Thursday, March 25th, a two-day administrator address correspondence went out announcing that eGrants is changing the required browser effective April 15th. Everyone should now be using Chrome. TEA's homepage can be very helpful. Several items we will discuss are located at the top of the page in the popular applications ribbon. Ask TED, Grant Opportunities, and TO Login. Also, please be sure to take note of the Finance and Grants tab in the middle of the page. Hover over that tab and you will be able to locate more information about grants and grants administration. Let's start by looking at Ask TED. Once you select the Ask TED link, it will take you to the Ask TED, Texas Education Directory webpage. Once you're on this page, you can search for and review your district and campus information, or the person who has ASTED administrator rights can update the information. There is also a link for applying for ASTED administrator rights in order to be able to perform this task. The LEA's authorized official will approve any requests for administrator logon. Once in ASTED, you will want to check and update campus information, check and update campus grade span, and check and update other LEA information as well. Next, be sure all staff that need access to TO&E grants have access or get access as early as possible. 
and that new and existing staff have the correct roles for completing the application. By selecting the TIL login link on the popular applications ribbon of TEA's homepage, you'll be taken to the TEA login screen. On TEA login TIL screen, if you don't have a TIL account, click on the request new user account link above the username. You will be directed to a screen to provide information and submit your request. If you already have an account, this is a screen where you will log into TIL and access eGrants. If you have a new superintendent or designee who will be the grantee official certifying and submitting the application, work with them to get their access to TIL as early as possible. Program staff and or grant writers should know who the grantee official is, so once they have completed the information in the application, they can notify and follow up appropriately with the grantee official to be sure the application has been submitted to TA in a timely manner. Clean up and delete old access. Maybe someone has been promoted and or just has multiple roles for some reason. Review staff's roles periodically and delete roles that are no longer applicable to a person's position and duties. If you're requesting access through TIL, there are several applications you can request. You will need to request eGrants access. eGrants roles and privileges. This table shows you specifically the eGrants roles in blue on the left have different capabilities based on the different area tabs of eGrants in black along the top. For example, in the context tab of eGrants, all roles except grantee viewer can modify information. Another example, if you are in the special collections tab working on the SC 5003, only a grantee official or grantee manager can submit changes. Once you're working on the grant application in the grants tab, only the grantee official can submit the original application. If you need assistance in identifying the proper role, contact the TAA grant negotiator assigned to your region. We will provide more information on how to contact your negotiator when we get to the grant resources section. When requesting access to eGrants, the correct CDN and vendor ID number will be needed. The vendor ID number must be a 10-digit number. For LEAs, it will be beginning with the 1 followed by LEA's federal employment ID number. For a few charter schools operated by university, the ID number will usually begin with a 3 followed by the LEA's federal employment ID number. The same 10-digit vendor ID number is also used to access ER for payment requests. Starting early and coordinating with others will aid in completing the SPED application federal. Collaborate with ESSA and Perkins staff members who also have a stake in completing the contacts information at SC5003. More on this in a moment. Work with business office staff to ensure items budgeted in the application are properly coded. For example, Knowing your LEA's capitalization level is key for properly budgeting supplies and capital outlay. Knowing your LEA's capitalization level may help to avoid amendments later in the year. Work with those involved with the needs assessment and properly document activities in the grant application. Fiscal agents begin communicating and setting up agreements with member districts. If you need a list of your SSA members, access your current SPED application and on BS6001, there is a button that will produce a report of your current SSA members. Finally, consider process specific to your LEA. If there's anyone else you need to coordinate with, start early and set up time with them too. Obtain a copy of the most recently approved copy of the 2021 SPED application federal. We often see information in the application that is very similar, if not copied from the previous year, as many LEAs use the funds the same way year to year. Be sure to use the most recently approved application so you can hopefully avoid negotiating the same items again this year as last year. Review the negotiation notes and based upon those notes, improve the information included in this year's 21-22 application. This should reduce negotiation time and help everyone receive their awards more quickly. You do not need to wait until the grant application is launched by TEA to update the contacts information in eGrants. This tab is available to update at any time. Remember, this is not just for SPED. Information in the contacts tab includes ESSA and Perkins contacts. Be sure to include the grantee official who will be certified submitting the SE5003, ADC, grant applications, and primary and secondary contacts for your SPED application, as well as others who may submit negotiation responses for the original grant and or amendments. If you need to add, edit, or remove a contact, you can do so by clicking the Contacts tab at the top left of the page. Once clicked, you will see the Add, Edit, and Remove buttons at the bottom of the screen. Once you have clicked the Add button, you'll be prompted to enter the new contacts information. The SC5003 is a consolidated schedule that contains the guidelines and assurances for SPED Federal, SPED State, ESSA, and Perkins. We will talk about completing the SE 5003 over the next couple of slides. In order to access the SE 5003, you will need to log into TIL. Once you are logged into TIL, you will find a list of applications such as eGrants, SPED Reports, Expenditure Reporting, and GFFC Reports. 
In the eGrants application section, select the eGrants role that will permit you to work on the SPED federal application. For example, ESC staff may have grantee viewer role and grantee manager role. The viewer role will only allow you to look at the contacts list, but the grantee manager role will permit you to edit the contact information. Once in eGrants, enter your county district number in the top right corner of the screen. The SC5003 and SC5003 stands for Special Collections. Therefore, you will find the SC5003 under the Special Collections tab. Select the SC5003 Formula Grant Consolidated Schedule link from the list and start reviewing the information and make updates as appropriate. When completing the SC5003, all three grant programs, SPED, SM, and Perkins, will need to include any barriers to equitable access and participation for groups receiving services. Be sure to allow the SM and Perkins grant program staff to complete this section before it is certified and submitted. It is acceptable to select no barriers. All three grant programs, SPED, SM, and Perkins, will need to review the general guidelines, provisions, and assurances, lobbying certification, and program-specific guidelines and provisions and assurances. Once all the program staff, SPED, SM, and Perkins, have completed the reviewed parts one and two, the authorized official will need to certify and submit the SC5003. Complete the information in the authorized official section by selecting the appropriate person under Select Contact. The submitter information will be completed by the system once the certified submit button is selected. The next item you will need to complete is the ADC. You will log in through TEAL and select the eGrants role that permits you to complete the ADC. Once in eGrants, enter your CDN as described previously for the SC5003. This time you will select the Grants tab to find the SPED Grant Federal. Under the SPED Grant, there will be a list where you can select the SPED Application Designation and Certification form. In part one of the form, select the radio button for how you apply for each funding source. Apply and own as an independent, apply as a fiscal agent of a shared service arrangement, or as a member of a shared services arrangement. This year we have updated line three for IDAB discretionary death, where you can only select apply as a fiscal agent or not apply at all. It is also very important to identify if you will not be applying for a source of funds for that program at all. If you're not eligible or do not have any funds for a specific program or funding source, that line will be disabled and grayed out. In part two, the authorized official should review the certification and corporation statement. Complete the information in the authorized official section by selecting the appropriate name under the select contact, and then select the certify and submit button to send it to EA. The submitted information will automatically populate once the certify and submit button has been selected. This completes my portion of the presentation. I will now turn the presentation over to my colleague, Elizabeth Sanchez. Thank you for the introduction, JJ. As he mentioned, my name is Elizabeth Sanchez. I will be going over the next steps in the application process. After the application designation and certification form has been submitted, the application will appear and have a status of available. Clicking on the grant title will open the table of contents page. Schedules to complete. The table of contents page shows all of the schedules that must be completed. Please start with the GS 2100 schedule. The GS2100 schedule displays the applicant information, including primary and secondary contacts for the grant. Because these individuals will be the first point of contact if negotiation is required, please ensure their contact information is accurate and up to date. Next, we will go to the PS3502 schedule for private nonprofit schools participation. Part one of the schedule shows the schedule completion exceptions for the PS3502 schedule. If the grantee is an open enrollment charter school or if there are no private schools, including home schools located within the legal boundaries of the applicant's agency, the grantee will check one of the two applicable options and be done with the PS3502 schedule. Otherwise, the grantee must complete the remainder of the schedule. Let's jump to part four, proportionate share calculations. Part four, proportionate share calculations. Please note that line two should be greater than line three. Line two equals students ages three to 21 in public schools on the last Friday in October, 2020. Line three equals students ages three to 21 in private schools on the last Friday in October, 2020. Part A was for IDEA B formula, and now in part B, we will be looking at the proportionate share calculations for IDEA B preschool funds. Line two should be greater than or equal to line three. The system will provide an error message if line three is greater than line two. 
Line two equals students ages three to five in public schools on the last Friday in October 2020. Line three equals students ages three to five in private schools on the last Friday in October 2020. Let's look at part six, services. In this section, the grantee must describe how they determine which private school students receive services. The grantee must provide a brief description of the consultation process. For example, the grantee can state that they met with private schools and determined that speech services were the greatest need. Because of their consultation process, they serve private school students that need speech services. Part 7, Consultation Process Documentation. The application accepts multiple responses to allow for all three options. Documentation of the attempts made to obtain written affirmation must be attached if the second checkbox is selected. This documentation should be a description of the attempts the LEA made to obtain written affirmation from private school representatives that timely and meaningful consultation occurred. We have a private school's consultation template. If you do not have a copy of this template, please contact your regional negotiator to request a copy. In the next slide, I will go over how to attach this documentation in eGrants. Attaching documentation in eGrants. Step one, click on attach files next to the green paperclip icon. This is located below the grant title in the table of contents page. This will open the attach file page. Please follow the instructions provided to attach the file. Make sure the file is saved to your computer before attempting to upload the document. We have gone over the program schedules for the application. Now we will be moving on to the budget schedules. In this upcoming section, we will cover the program budget summary, supporting budget schedules, fiscal compliance, and some helpful resources that are available to you. The BS 6001 schedule is the program budget summary. There are three fund sources on the federal application, IDEA B Formula, IDEA B Preschool, and IDEA B Discretionary DEF. Part one shows the available funding for each fund source, and part two is the detailed breakdown of how those funds will be used for the grant. Just like last year, CEIS funds are no longer documented in the budget summary. CEIS will only be documented in the BS 6016 schedule. My colleague Tammy Michaels will go into more detail about this when she covers the BS 6016 schedule in the next part of the presentation. Please note that as you enter information in part two of the budget summary, those budgeted funds will auto-populate in the applicable supporting budget schedule and you will need to complete that supporting budget schedule. Also, as a reminder, direct administrative costs are not allowable with IDEA B funds. This is why the breakdown of direct admin costs is hidden in the budget summary. Let's move on to the supporting budget schedules. The BS 6101 supporting budget schedule is for payroll costs. Part one of the schedule is pre-populated from the BS 6001 budget summary for each funding source. If no funds are budgeted in the budget summary for IDEA B formula, preschool, or discretionary DEF, then the column will be grayed out in part two. The number of positions is not required for the schedule. Instead, there are checkboxes. This will give more flexibility with amendments. Be sure to select the checkboxes under the appropriate fund source for the types of positions you are budgeting for in part two. Let's move on to part three of the schedule. Part 3 of the BS 6101 covers substitutes, extra duty, and benefits. Be sure to select the appropriate checkboxes as applicable. Line 1, the for school-wide personnel checkbox was the most negotiated item in the 2020-2021 SPED application. To give you some background on this, Section 1114A1 states that for school-wide programs, LEAs may consolidate with other federal, state, and local funds. This is why the school-wide checkbox is an option in the schedule. By selecting the school-wide checkbox in Part 3, the grantee is indicating that they are consolidating federal or federal, state, and local funds on the ESSA SC5000 schedule. Additionally, the grantee is indicating that the budgeted funds will be used to pay for personnel who provide services on school-wide campuses not coded to 8911. There is a validation we have added to the system that will pop up if you select the school-wide checkbox. We added this alert in the system because we noticed that several grantees selected this checkbox without seeing if they had indicated they were consolidating funds in the SC5000, and the application had to go back into negotiation either for the grantee to unselect the school checkbox 
or for the grantee to revise the SC5000 form in their ESSA application to indicate consolidation of funds. In the next slide, I will go over the SC5000 schedule as it relates to the school-wide checkbox. School-wide costs for payroll and the ESSA SC5000 schedule. If the school-wide checkbox is selected in Part 3 of the BS6101, the SC5000 should indicate one or more campuses designated as school-wide and consolidation of funds. This consolidation of funds is indicated by selecting either federal funds only or federal state local funds in the SC5000. The image above is an example of what the SC5000 would look like if the grantee decided to select the school-wide checkbox in Part 3. As a final reminder about Part 3, please note that this section is for positions not selected in Part 2. Supporting Budget Schedules Instructions This is a great resource available to grantees as they are completing the schedules in eGrants. There is an Instructions button located on the top right-hand corner of every budget schedule. If you click on it, it opens a new page that provides additional information to help you complete the schedule. And with that final bit of information, I will turn it over to my colleague, Tammy Michaels. Hello, as Elizabeth mentioned, this is Tammy Michaels from the Grants Administration Division here to walk you through the remainder of the application. The next budget schedule we will discuss is the BS 6201 Professional and Contracted Services Schedule. You will notice that there are three parts to the schedule, which we will discuss in detail. We are going to skip around a bit with the schedule. First, let's take a look at part two, direct administrative cost. Direct administrative costs are unallowable in this grant, so we will not do anything with part two. This is true for the entire SPED application. So anytime you see the direct administrative cost schedule in the SPED application, you may ignore it. Now let's look at part one of the schedule. If funds for professional and contracted services were budgeted back in the program budget summary, those funds are now pre-populated in part one in both total professional and contracted services cost line and the remaining 6,200 costs that do not require specific approval. So what if the district needs to budget for specific costs? There are two ways to budget for specific costs in the schedule. In part one, line one provides space to enter costs for rental or lease of building space for buildings or land. If the district budgets funds into line one, the remaining 6,200 line will automatically be reduced. The second way to budget for specific costs is in line two, professional and consulting services. Again, if funds are budgeted in line two, remaining 6,200 will be reduced. If funds are budgeted in line two, professional and consulting services, then they must be itemized in part three of this schedule. So let's move into part three of professional and contracted services to budget itemized specific services. Notice that many of the specific costs have grayed out boxes. This indicates that the cost is unallowable for the grant program. You may also review our detailed program guidelines that identify allowable professional and contracted services for guidance on allowable activities. You may find the program guidelines through the link provided or through TEA's website under grant opportunities. If the district has allowable itemized costs, please document the cost using the dollar amount in lines 1 through 27. Note, if the, note that if the district is required to budget for residential set aside, you may enter the dollar amount into line 22 for these costs. If the specific cost is not listed in part three of lines one through 27, you may scroll down to line 28 and add an allowable cost and provide the purpose. But please double check that the cost is allowable per the program guidelines. Districts may add or remove additional itemized services as needed by clicking on the add item or delete item buttons. Once all itemized professional and contracted services have been budgeted in part three, save the schedule. In the background, the system will validate the amount budgeted in the line total professional and consulting services with the cost in the dollar amount budgeted in part one, line two, professional and consulting services. If these amounts do not match, 
an error will populate. The district will then need to follow the error notification in order to correct the schedule. Here's the budget schedule for BS 6401, other operating costs. Again, if funds for other operating costs were budgeted back in the program budget summary, those funds are now pre-populated into part one in the line remaining 6,400 costs that do not require specific approval. The district may itemize specific costs in the lines one through seven for costs that require specific approval. Again, all e-grants follow the same rule. If a specific activity is grayed out, this indicates that the cost is unallowable for the grant program. Once all allowable costs are entered in lines 1 through 7, funds will automatically be deducted from the amount in remaining 6,400, costs that do not require specific approval. Budgeting for specific costs requires at least two steps. First, the district budgets for the specific cost. Then you will see that each itemized cost has a unique instruction listed under it, identifying the steps to take next. For example, if the district budgets funds in line one for out-of-state travel, follow the instructions, LEA must keep documentation locally. This means the district will follow the link in the PowerPoint to the TEA website, forms for prior approval, disclosure, and justification. There, under the Justification of Expenditures section, click on Justification for Out-of-State Travel. Complete the form and keep it on file for your audit records. Note that other itemized operating costs may have different required actions, such as submitting prior approval forms via email. As mentioned in the previous section, we will not do anything with Part 2 as direct administrative costs are unallowable for this section. Next, we will discuss the debt services schedule, BS 6501. This is an infrequently used schedule, but may be helpful for your district to cover leased purchases spanning multiple years. Examples of allowable debt services are SPED adapted buses and portable buildings for unique SPED instruction. Please refer to the program guidelines as they break down specific allowable cost within the consolidated grant. Let's look at part one of the debt services schedule. In line one, the capital lease principal is where you budget the current school year capital lease principal. This completes part one. Let's now move down to part two of the schedule. In part two, enter the property description using allowable activities such as adapted bus or portable buildings for unique SPED instruction. Then select the fund source from the drop-down option, such as IDEA B Formula or IDEA B Preschool. Then enter the property value. As mentioned earlier, the lease purchase must span multiple years. So in the contract date section, at a minimum, the contract may last two years, but cannot exceed 10 years. If the district is budgeting for multiple debt services, you may add additional items using the blue button at the bottom of the schedule, and if needed, the district may also remove the debt services by clicking the delete button. Now let's move on to the next schedule, capital outlay. If funds were budgeted for capital outlay in the program budget summary, they will be pre-populated in line three and the total capital outlay cost line. But before we go into detail about the budget schedule, let's discuss capitalization levels, as this is a frequently negotiated item. Per EGGER guidelines, items must be capitalized if they cost $5,000 or more, or they meet the district's capitalization level, whichever amount is less. Equipment is capitalized if it is non-expendable, tangible personal property with a useful life of one year or more, and meets or exceeds the capitalization level. So for example, let's look at a wheelchair that costs $4,500 in a district that has a capitalization level of $5,000. The wheelchair would be budgeted under supplies and materials as it does not meet the capitalization level of $5,000, even though it has a useful life of over a year. Now that we have discussed when items are capitalized, Let's look at three ways to itemize costs within capital outlay schedule. 
Again, if funds were budgeted for capital outlay in the program budget summary, funds will automatically be pre-populated in part one, line three, for furniture, equipment, vehicles, or software costs, and in the total capital outlay cost line. Therefore, if the district budgets items in lines one and two, line three will automatically be reduced. Line one is for budgeting SPED-related library books or media controlled by the library. Line two is for cost to upgrade or improve equipment purchased through the previous year's SPED funding. Line three functions a little differently as the district may, must itemize these costs in part two of the schedule and the cost of these items must equal the amount budgeted in line three. So in part two, if funds are budgeted in part one, line three, these costs must be itemized in part two. Examples include SPED-related furniture, equipment, vehicles, or software costs. In this section, please enter descriptions, number of units, the fund source, and a brief generic description related to the SPED program. For example, use adapted bus to transport SPED students instead of just bus. Please double check to ensure that the cost of these items listed in part two are equal to the amount budgeted in part one, line three. Uh, and the district may also add or remove items using the blue buttons at the bottom of the schedule. Next, we will move on to the BS 6016 Fiscal Compliance Requirement Schedule. As a reminder, every e-grant schedule has an instructions button located in the upper right-hand corner of the page. The instructions break down how to complete the schedule and can be extremely helpful. If you still have questions or concerns when completing a grant, feel free to contact your regional negotiator who we will list at the end of this training. Now we will work through the schedule line by line. Let's start with line one. In line one, you will enter the amount of state and local or local only special education expenditures from the most recent prior year that the LEA was in MOE compliance. This information may be found on the most recent IDEA B MOE compliance review report. Now let's move to line two. In line two, enter the state and local or local only special education funds budgeted for the current year. Let's break this down a bit because it's very complex. If the district entered state and local expenditures in line one, then the district must enter state and local expenditures on line two. The schedule does not record the district's federal funds, only state and local or local funds expended. And line one is for the most recent prior year SPED expenditures. And line two is for the current year state and local or local only SPED budget. Okay, now that we have reviewed what information is required, let's look at the results of completing these two amounts. As you can see in here, there's a little bit of math, but it's not too hard. So if line two is less than line one, the justification will automatically open line three. Otherwise, line three will not open and you will not need to complete it. If line two is greater than or equal to line one, the district will move down to line four. In line four, the district will select one of the options. Either the district has used state and local expenditures or the district has used local expenditures only to complete section one and two. Let's go into greater detail on line three. If the LEA's budget does not equal or exceed the amount expended in the most recent year, the district must select a specific justification from the options. Then on the right hand side of line three, document the amount of MOE reduction. The amount entered in line two plus the amount entered into the MOE reduction in line three must equal or exceed line one. Part B, MOE Voluntary Reduction Amount. Here the district must select one option, and if you are a fiscal agent of an SSA, you must complete this section for each member district. To determine which option to select, 
compare the district's current year planning amount and final amount to the prior year's final amount to determine if the district is eligible for MOE voluntary reduction. Additionally, the district must meet all three qualifications in order to voluntarily reduce MOE. These three qualifications are, one, must have an increase in IDEA B formula final amount from the previous year. Two, must have a determination that meets requirements. And three, has not been identified as having significant disproportionality under 34 CFR section 300.647. The third option on this schedule provides the district with the opportunity to voluntarily reduce MOE for 21-22. If this option is selected, the district must then complete the MOE voluntary reduction amount for the actual amount of MOE being, re being decreased in the current year. If the district does not have an actual amount when submitting the schedule, report an estimate, then wait for final amounts to be released and update as needed. Again, if the district chooses to voluntarily reduce MOE, the district must review this section when final amounts are released around December and amend the schedule if there are any changes. Another option, if the district is undecided to voluntarily reduce MOE, keep in mind that the district's current year um, planning amount is re released in June and the final amount is released in December. Therefore, if the district chooses to wait until the final amounts are released in December to determine if it will voluntarily reduce MOE, the district may select one of the two options in the schedule. The first option, I did not meet the eligibility criteria to voluntarily reduce the MOE in 2021-22. Or the second option, I was eligible to voluntarily reduce MOE in 2020. 21-22, but I did not exercise this option. Then, when final amounts are released in December, compare last year's final amount with the current year's final amount. And if changes are required, the district may choose to amend the application to update the MOE voluntary reduction. Now we, now we will move on to part two of the BS 6016, Fiscal Compliance Requirement Schedule. Part two, CEIS or CC. EIS requirements. I will refer to this only as CEIS moving forward. The district will only complete this section if funds are being reserved for CEIS. Otherwise, leave part two sections A and B blank. CEIS provides support for kindergarten through grade 12 students who have not by, been identified as needing special education services but who have additional academic or behavioral support needs. Reserve funds may be used for professional development, educational and behavioral evaluation, services and support to these students. LDAs that are identified with significant disproportionality are required to reserve the full 15% of IDEA B formula and IDEA B preschool funds in the schedule. If, there, if you are required to or decide to reserve funds for struggling non-disabled students, in Part A, first select your district name from the drop-down box. The second box in Part A will reflect the maximum allowable reservation. Then you enter the amount the district will reserve up to 15% in either IDEA B Formula and or IDEA B Preschool. If you are a fiscal agent of an SSA, you may add additional districts by clicking on the Add Member District. This is the only space where the district will document they have reserved funds for struggling non-disabled students. CEIS will no, no longer be allocated in other budget summer schedules as we have in the past. If the district decides to remove CEIS funds, then the district will need to delete the member district's information in Part 2, Sections A and B. But note that districts cannot remove the reserve funds if they are identified with significant disproportionality. This is the end of the budget schedules for the SPED grant. Here's our contact information if your district has questions regarding the application or other applications. 
Additionally, this training will be posted to our website to review later. This slide provides links to helpful guidance on the Special Ed Consolidated Grant. Our Grant Opportunities page lists all grant applications available. You can search for your grant and look up due dates, the program guidelines, and other important information to manage grants. The Applying for a Grant link provides umbrella guidance on how to apply for grants and what to expect during the grant cycle. The eGrants link provides access to all electronic grants such as Special Education, Consol uh, Special Education Consolidated, ESSA, and Perkins. The eGrants link works best with Google Chrome and is no longer supported under Internet Explorer. Here we have the SPED Entitlements link, which breaks down the grant award for each district. They, these are updated when final amounts are calculated around December and contain entitlements for SPED, ESSA, Perkins, and others. Next is the IDEAB Fiscal Compliance link to assist you with maintenance of effort and excess cost questions. And then we have a link to our justification forms that are needed for costs budgeted in uh, the BS 6401, other operating costs, such as out-of-state travel like we discussed earlier. Now we will open up to questions from our audience. 